Sorry about that. <laughs> you can suck my left nut. <laughs> If you live in Ohio, I've got some exciting news for you guys. I'll be coming out on September 23rd to Toledo and filming a vlog at Deep Stacks. It's one hour south of Detroit, 90 minutes east of Fort Wayne, and two hours west of Cleveland. All of those cities I just mentioned I will not be visiting this summer, so if you live there and want to make the vlog, I hope to see you on the 23rd. Oh, and it's 18 and older. Then I'll be driving south to Dayton and playing at Mad River. That's one hour west of Columbus, one hour north of Cincinnati, and three hours north of Louisville. All of those cities I also won't be visiting this summer, so come out and make the vlog on the 24th and 25th. They're also 18 and older, and while I'm there, the largest tournament in Ohio's history will be running. It's a $600, $1 million guarantee, and you may also catch me at one of those tables. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to another video. I'm here at Michigan's largest casino in Battle Creek, Michigan, Firekeepers Casino. They have a promotion going today, all day. So uh, I'm coming at the end of it, but we're gonna try to still win some free money. Into the 2-5 game, it's match the stack. Let's go. The room is absolutely packed this Saturday. The occasion, $1,300 hourly high hands all day long. Celebrating their 13th anniversary, I want my share of the free money. I hop into the 2-5 match a stack game. I'm in for $3,000. First hand of the night, I look down at Ace Jack Offsuit from the Big Blind. The cutoff who goes by Ben, he's gonna be a name to watch for the rest of this video. He decides to raise me up to $20 from the cutoff. Action's back over to me and I'm not a wuss. I put in the three bet to 80 bucks, to which Ben also puts in the call. So we're going heads up out of position to a flop, which comes jack six, six with two hearts. Top pair is a pretty hard hand to make. Against most opponents, I'd probably go for a 50 to $75 bet. But against Ben, we have some dynamics. I actually start with a check. There's not too many cards on the turn that I'm afraid of. Obviously a heart wouldn't be too good, but if he checks back on the flop, I don't really think he's gonna have a heart draw. He decides to check behind and that brings in the ace of hearts on the turn. It's a double-edged sword because although we make two pair, it brings in the front door heart flush draw. Although it's not too common that opponent's gonna check back a hand like nine, 10 of hearts on the flop only to realize on the turn. I decide now to bump up the pot, I make it 80 bucks to play, and when the action goes over to Ben, I expect him either to call or fold. A raise really wouldn't make too much sense. Of course, in the moment, that's what Ben decides to do. He raises it up to $225. Definitely a weird spot because I don't really think he'd be checking back a six. Any other jack I have beat, and I don't know why they'd raise the turn. So really the only hands that make sense are the heart flush draws that got there on the turn. However, I just don't really see people checking behind those draws on the flop. Given the fact that I now have a better two pair, I decide to put in the call, bringing in the fourth heart, a really bad card, the 10 of hearts on the river. Obviously, I'm not gonna be betting when Ben check raises me on the turn. I check it over to him, but apparently it was a great card for me to see on the river because he checks behind with five, four of hearts. So that 10 of hearts definitely saved us around two to $300 on that river. Great card for me to see, but interesting, he decided to check back the flop with five, four of hearts. All right, Ben, I'm gonna remember that one for the next one. I wasn't joking, literally the very next hand, I'm in the small blind and I look down at 10-8 of hearts. A Little bit of PTSD, the heart screwed me on the last one, but Ben decides to raise it up to $25 from the hijack. Not gonna get my money back by just flat calling. I decide to three bet up to $90. If I'm three betting with all my strong pocket pairs in hands like ace-king, ace-jack, ace-queen, I also have to mix in a few random hands like 10-8 suited. Granted, if I do get called, I'll be out of position, but that's just the nature of the beast. Ben puts in the call for for 90 bucks and we're heads up out of position to a flop which comes ace nine four with one heart. I have a few backdoor draws like the heart flush draw and a straight draw. An ace out there is gonna be good for my range considering when I three bet him and he doesn't four bet me, I'm gonna have more of the pocket aces, the ace king. However, I don't have the exclusive nuts on this board. He can definitely have pocket fours and pocket nines. And for me, it's harder to have pocket fours. I don't really think I'm uh, three betting to 90 bucks with pocket fours from the small blind. I decided to check it over to Ben and he checks behind. When the turn card now comes the 10 of spades, I don't really think there's too much merit in betting. We're only gonna get called by better hands. For instance, if he checks back a weak ace on the flop for deception, he's definitely gonna be calling us on the turn. 
By checking, it allows him to bet with hands that we have beat. Hands like Jack Queen for the open ended straight draw or other hands with really no showdown value are gonna bet and we can just pick off some bluffs. When I check it over to Ben for a second time, he now bets out for $60. Sticking to the plan, I don't really think a raise makes too much sense, so I put in the 60 bucks and that leads us to a very favorable river card, the Eight of Diamonds. Pretty deceptive card too, because I don't think Ben is gonna put us on a hand like 9-8 or 10-8, but now we're in an interesting spot. Do we go for the check or do we lead out into Ben? I'm interested to see what you guys would do. Pause the video right now and let me know down below if you would A, lead out into Ben here for like $150, around half the size of the pot, or would you B, check it over to Ben and look to go for a check raise? Take a second, leave a comment down below, and now let's get back into the hand. I decided to go with option A. I bet around half pot for $140, to which we get absolutely snap called by Ben. I confidently turn over my two pair, and he mucks showing the ace of diamonds. Probably could have sized up on that river, maybe around pot. That would make it look like a little bit more of a bluff. But either way, we're gonna scoop down that $600 pot against Ben's top pair, and we're one for one against the opponent on the session. On to the next one, I look down at ace queen offsuit from the big blind. Middle position opens it up to $20, to which the button says, yep, I'm coming along for that price. Action's back over to me. When we have an open and just a call, I would be going for a squeeze with a large amount of my hands. However, ace queen suited is definitely a no brainer. 100% of the time I'm putting in the three bet, I bump it up to $95. When both players fold, we're wondering if that was a little bit too large, to which I think no, you have to usually go three X plus another X for a limper and plus another 20 bucks because I'm out of position, so I think 100 bucks is pretty fine. We're gonna take down that pot uncontested. Moving right along from the small blind, I look down at pocket fives and the hijack opens it up to $20. When the cutoff and the button both call, I could go for a squeeze once again. Instead, I look to go four ways to a flop when I put in the call, hoping to flop a set. The flop does not give us the good news we are hoping for. It comes king, three, deuce with two hearts, although we have some backdoor ideas. I decided to start with a check, and surprisingly, the preflop raiser checks as well on this king high board, leaving us to see a five of clubs on the turn. Bang, we turn a set. Great spot for us, and now we have an interesting decision as well. There's three other opponents in the hand, none of which wanted to take initiative on the flop. Does that mean we should lead out into the field? Apparently, I thought so in the moment, and I toss in two green chips into the $80 pot. Remember Ben from those last two hands? Yep, he's in the hijack and puts in the call, and he's the only one to do so. Only one giving us action so far. We're off to a river, which really shouldn't change anything. It comes the eight of spades. There's $180 in the middle, and I overbet the pot for $225, looking to get maximum value for maybe a slow played hand like pocket twos, pocket threes, or a hand like king 10, just not believing us for a large bet. Unfortunately though, Ben believes us, he mucks his cards, but guess what Ben? That's two to one for the good guys and we're up $100 on the session. Things are going swimmingly. I'm in the low jack and look down at ace 10 offsuit and I open it up to $15. The big blind puts in the call, leading us heads up to a flop, which comes ace, king, queen, monotone clubs. Too bad we don't have jack 10 of clubs here. Would be a royal flush. The title of the video would be amazing. I'd get more views and I'd also get $1,300 from firekeepers for the high hand bonus. Instead, we just have top pair and the big blind checks it over to me. On monotone boards, I'm usually gonna do a lot of checking. That's what I decide to do in the moment. And we see a turn card, which comes the biggest brick in the deck, the deuce of diamonds. Having top pair is pretty good on this board. So when the big blind leads into me for $15, I don't even think twice about it. I maybe could even be raising, although I don't really know what worse hands we get called by. So I decide to put in the $15 and that brings in the 10 of spades. When the opponent bets out for the same bet, $15, I snap call him. He turns over king nine offsuit. So we had a flush draw and a pair. That's no good, sir. I'm taking it down with two pair and 80 bucks is coming my way. Gas money. Next hand, we have 3,100 in my stack. I look down at the Cowboys from the small blind. Player in the hijack is Ben. He opens it up to $20 in the cutoff and the button both call. Being in the small blind, like I said earlier, I'll have a lot of squeezes in my range. Pocket Kings, once again, is not one of those hands that really needs to be squeezed. It's just a value hand. 
I'm gonna three bet him up to $100. It's like deja vu, Ben decides to put in the call. He's the only one to do so. So just like that, we're off to a flop out of position. We can never seem to play a pot in position versus Ben. So the board comes queen, 10, deuce, rainbow. With $240 in the middle, I size down for one third the size of the pot. 80 bucks is the price of poker. Ben thinks about it for about 15 seconds before tossing in the same amount of money. That means we're both gonna see a turn card which comes the seven of clubs. When Ben raises pre-flop and then calls my three bet and then calls a flop bet, He's gonna have a lot of interesting hands on this board. Sure, he could have some draws like King Jack and Jack Nine suited. He's also gonna have a good amount of Queen 10 suited. He's gonna have some Ace Queen, maybe some Pocket 10s as well. He's also a vlog watcher, so don't exclude Pocket 7s. Although because that's my favorite hand, I'm also gonna have a lot of those as well. I'm saying all this because in the moment I decided to check. Doing my voiceover now, I'm not too sure if I love this check. I think I need to be going around 300 to $400. By checking here, it allows him to check back with a lot of hands like ace queen, ace 10, peel an ace on the river and have us beat. It also gives him a big chance to improve with those hands, like I said, king jack and jack nine. And if he has hands like pocket tens, pocket deuces or pocket sevens, so be it. We're just gonna get stacked with our over pair. So yeah, pretty much I hate my check on this turn and the action's over to Ben. When he checks behind though, it's not the worst news in the world. I don't think he'd ever be doing this with any of his sets. So let's fade some drawing cards on the river and the river comes to ace of diamonds. So yeah, seems like that's gotta be one of the worst cards in the deck. Hands like ace queen, ace 10, king jack, now all have us beat. Although I do have two kings in my hand. $400 is in the middle and I think I need to go for a little bit of value. I decided to bet out for $80. $80 bet confuses Ben a little bit. He just puts in the call. So I confidently turn over my pocket kings expecting to be good, to which he shows me the bad news. Ace jack offsuit, so he called me on a gutter. He was never gonna get that because I have two kings in my hand, but you know what he gets? Gets top pair and just like that, he's gonna take down that $560 pot and I played that hand like an absolute dingus. All right, I butchered that last hand with pocket kings. The poker gods reward me. They wanna see me play it the right way. I'm in the hijack. I look down at the same hand and open it up to $25 over a few limpers to which just the big blind and one of the limper puts in the call. Going three ways to a flop of 10, 10, four is decent, although it's not too great because obviously any 10 has a speed. But with the front door heart draw out there, I decided to bet out for $40 around half the pot looking to protect my hand and get some value. Big blind and middle position both fold, and that means we're gonna win this hand, although it's only 75 bucks. Big whoopee. Moving right along, I look down at ace queen offsuit and I am in the straddle. Cody from under the gun decides to raise it up to $35. When the hijack puts in the call, I'm gonna go for the re-raise and I make it $150 which I think is a great sizing on my part. Cody and the player in middle position don't agree. They fold their cards, but guess what? That means my stack increases by at least 70 bucks and uh, no complaints on my end there. 2,900 now in my stack, I look down at pocket tens and this is definitely the hand of the night. If you guys have not taken the chance to like this video and drop me a subscribe, I would definitely appreciate it. And this hand is definitely what you guys came here for. Player to my right opens it up to $20 and I have pocket tens, that's a great hand. I pop it up to $60. The button puts in the call and now the player in plus one decides to re-raise to $200. Definitely a strange line from early position, but pocket tens is a very strong hand. And if we hit a 10 on the board, we can definitely stack some hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks, all that garbage. So I decide to put in the $200 and the button gets out of the way. Going heads up in position finally to a flop of 986 with two hearts. It's a great board for us because obviously we have an over pair, but against those hands like pocket jacks, queens, kings, and aces, we now have a gutter to the straight. When early position bets out for $300, I'm never folding with my over pair, but it's really just nice to have a blanket of security. Any seven will give us a straight. So I decided to put in the $300, leading us off to a turn which comes the three of diamonds. The pot has already ballooned up to $1,100, and apparently the player to my right wants to check and control the size of the pot. Now me a year ago would have checked behind and controlled the size of the pot, but knowing what I know now, I think I need to bet my hand for protection. Hand like ace king and ace queen that might have bet the flop and now check the turn i don't want to give them a free card even if he has a hand like kings or aces i can still suck out with any seven so i decided to pick up the betting lead and lead out for 525 dollars just a side note by betting here it also allows me to check back on rivers 
where if I check on the turn and he just ships his entire stack on the river, I'm definitely in a tough spot. I'm gonna get value from hands that I have beat and protect my hand and I can also check back on the river and keep the size of the pot pretty small if he does have a hand like aces or kings. When he puts in the call and we see a four diamonds on the river, I definitely expect to see a check from him. I'll gladly check behind and hopefully scoop this $2,200 pot. What I don't expect is the opponent to lead out into me when he checks on the turn. Basically, when he checks the turn, he either has ace, king, ace, queen, or he's doing this with a hand like jacks plus, thinking that I have all the sets on the flop. Yes, I'll have all the nines, eights, and sixes, so when he leads out here for $800 on the river, it's so gross. $800 into the $2,200 pot, I'm basically getting three to one on my money. But at the same time, pocket tens is just a bluff catcher, and do I really think he's taking this line with ace, king, or ace, queen? I don't really think so. I think he would just check the river, hoping that I would check behind. So that being said, I muck my cards. Now, because this was a significant hand, I decided to turn on my other phone and record and try to prompt him to see if he would explain his thought process and let me know what kind of hand he had. I thought it was a good, re since you didn't re-raise me, I three bet at my ace king. You didn't come over the top. You mean pre-flop? Yeah. yeah. But like you said, that was a horrible, horrible flop for ace king. Yeah, I'm surprised you called 500 on the, on the what, turn? Well, I shot 300 out there, and like you didn't re-raise me, so I'm not putting you on a set. No, you put me on ace king. I see. I see. Yeah. So I put you on, like, okay, you shoot 500. We got the same hand. I was like, if an ace or a king comes, then we're like we we shove, but like a three came, which helped neither one of us. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the same hand. Hey, nice hand, nice hand. You got me good. All right, well, I'm not really too sure what to make of it. He said he had ace king in that last hand. I don't know if I believe him. You guys can let me know down in the comments. I have a feeling you guys are gonna agree with me. I posted this on my Instagram story and everyone said he was full of it and didn't have ace king. He was just such a nice guy. I don't know. I don't know how he would be lying there, but either way, nice hand. Wow. Nice hand, buddy. I look down at pocket eights from the cutoff. I decide to raise it up to $25 over a few limpers. We're gonna get called by early position and the big blind. When the flop comes 10, eight, six, bang! We flop middle set. Absolute amazing flop for us, and both opponents check it over to me. I'm not gonna slow play this. I bet out for two thirds for $40, and the big blind pretty quickly gets out of the way. The early position though doesn't wanna fold. He also doesn't wanna call. He has some evil intentions, which I definitely want to see, and he raises it up to $125. If he has a hand like seven nine, so be it. We have outs to that. I'm just gonna double him up if that's the case. So when he re-raises me to $125, the only things that are going through my head is whether I should flat call or should I go for the re-raise. I think flat calling makes most sense. It allows him to continue with a lot of his draws like 10-9, 8-9, 6-9. Allows him to call with a lot of hands like 10-9, 8-9, and 6-7, where if I re-raise, he's probably just gonna fold those hands. That being said, I put in the $125 and we're going heads up in position to a turn, which comes a seven of hearts. Not a great card, because now two of those hands I just mentioned, 10-9 and 8-9, now make a straight. When the opponent bets out for $225, I have a decision. Obviously, I'm not gonna fold, but do I wanna get all the money in right now? I think calling is probably the better option because raising just folds all of his weaker hands. And now with the seven of hearts coming on the turn, he's gonna have a lot of those straights, like I said. He could still have pocket tens, sure. But he's gonna have a lot of straights and uh, better hands here. In the moment though, I was stuck some money and just wanted to get the money in. So I decided to rip it all in for $550 effective to which he snap calls. So that's definitely not good news. He definitely has a nine in his hand, I would think. Pair the board. I say out loud to my neighbor, pair the board. And to which the dealer listens, he puts a seven of spades out there. So unless he has pocket tens, I for sure have the best hand. Turn over my boat and his boat sinks. He mucks his cards and he shows 10-9 for the turn straight. So yeah, that's unfortunate for him, but we're not sad in the slightest. $1,400 coming my way. And that's definitely a cherry on top to end the night. Oh, but wait, the guy to my right is not done talking about that ace-king hand just yet. Check it out. So the guy that got me in that hand, I gave him VIP so he could switch it to my emoji. Everyone's swiping up and saying okay. that he uh, he didn't have ace-king. Right. What do you got to say about that? <laughs> you can suck my left nut. <laughs> not the right one, because you don't deserve that. But the left one, you can have. <laughs>
After a comical end of the night, I rack up my chips and head to the cage. I have a three hour drive back to Chicago. And although I lost some money, it definitely was a fun time. <laughs> Rick made it back out here to Fire Keepers. Three appearances, Bang. three straight videos, Rick with the merch. Buy the merch, like and subscribe. You heard the man. Well, that did not go as planned, although it made for an entertaining video considering the guy is sticking to the story that he bluffed me. Got into that game for 3,000, out for 2285, so a net loss of 715 on the session. Obviously, if I call with the pocket tens there, we're up huge, probably like two, three grand, but we didn't. Uh, I thought he had aces or kings, so that's the moral of the story there. As always, good luck on the felt, you guys. Appreciate all the support and all the recent subscribe! Bang! Hey, let's go! I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace! Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.